This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan, with your host, Nancy Smitham. And get the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joyton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Russ Franson from Alpena County Library. Hi, Russ. Hi, Nancy. Welcome to Talk of the Town today. Thank I'm you. glad that I got to meet you. You're newer at the library, yes. so this is your indoctrination today. <laughs> so I hope everything goes well. I'm sure it will. And I'm sure you're learning what a busy place Alpena County Library is. Boy, it sure is. Isn't it? There's always lots of things going on, and, and July is a really good month for it. And of course, this time of year, it's Summer Book Club. So yes. how's that going? Summer Book Club is going great. We've got kids coming in every day giving their reports, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's kind of winding up in the next few weeks. Yes. Um, We've got a few things going on. Uh, we're taking part in the scavenger hunt at the National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, that'll be from 10 to noon on Tuesday the 8th. Okay. And then at uh, the Besser Museum, they're having the Northeast Michigan Science Day ah. from noon to two, uh, from from 10 to noon on Thursday, July 10th. Okay. And uh, we'll have crafts and things over there as part of that. And then uh, the big thing is the carnival. Yes. And we're having the carnival inside this year at the Apex. First time ever. Yes. Air conditioning. Yay. And um, that'll be from 10 to 2 at the Aplex on Wednesday, July 16th. And if you want to volunteer, ask for Brenda and call 356-6188. And we need yes. an unfathomable, unfathomable amount of volunteers. Yes. With all the thousands of kids that come through that event, we need yeah. a lot of volunteers. It can be food volunteers. You can be working at the games. You can be, there's so many things you can do. So please yes. call Brenda, 356-6188, and volunteer in the nice air-conditioned comfort. Yes. And we'll appreciate you very much. We sure will. Okay, Pushing the Limits Science Discussion Program. Yes, we've got a couple of good programs this, this month. Um, one of them is Thursday, the first one is Thursday, July 10th, and it's going to be at 7 o'clock, and uh, Jim Schaefer is going to be talking with us, uh, helping to lead the discussion on early life on Earth. Okay. And the book that we're going to be using is uh, Jean M. All's Land of Painted Caves. Ooh. And that's the last book in the series that started with Clan of the Cave Bear, um, a really neat series. And um, so, so it should be a really good discussion. Oh, it should be, yeah. and as always, everything at the library is top-notch. Yes. Then Thursday, June 24th. That's, ex that's going to be an exciting one. Yes. Uh, because um, we're going to be talking about technology and connections. And the book that they're going to be using is actually a favorite of mine. It's Thunderstruck by Eric Larson. And it uh, weaves a couple of stories together. The technology is uh, Marconi's invention of the radio and putting them on ships using, you know, uh, radios for ship-to-shore communication. And the murder mystery part of it that I like is uh, the story of Dr. Holly Crippen. Now, Dr. Crippen, uh, the Crippen murder case in uh, Great Britain is still thought of in terms of the O.J. Simpson murder ah. case here. It was that big. And so when uh, Dr. Crippen, who was from Coldwater, Michigan, oh, okay. originally, uh, when he hopped a boat to go to Canada um, with uh, Scotland Yard on his tail, um, uh, they used the radio. The ship's captain recognized Dr. Crippen. He was in a disguise. But the captain recognized him and used the newly installed radio ah. to call back and alert Scotland Yard. They hopped a faster ship, got there before him, and arrested him. How exciting. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So, so that's a really good book to use as the discussion. But the really cool part about that, uh, that event is going to be the Alpena High School uh, Technology uh, Robotics team is going to be there. They're going to have a demonstration and they're going to take part in the discussions about how technology and you know connection work together. And following on the heels of this wonderful international ROV competition we yes. had, what a great idea. Yeah. Okay, National Geographic Adventure of the Year. This oh, is what I'm excited about. That's going to be exciting too. Yes, it is. Um, Jennifer Farr Davis is the record holder 
for a through hike on the Appalachian Trail. And most people who hike the Appalachian Trail uh, do it in bits and spurts, you know, because they don't have a lot of time to do it. So they'll walk for a couple of weeks in one section, then the next year they'll go back and do the next section and, and that sort of thing. Well, Jennifer Farr Davis was doing uh, through hikes on the Appalachian Trail from Maine to uh, Georgia. And she did this uh, in 2011 in record time, a little over 46 and a half days, uh, a little under 46 and a half days, doing 47 miles a day. Unbelievable. It is. It's, it's amazing, walking and, like 16 hours a day. And she is a National Geographic adventurer, so yes, the she, story she'll have to tell us will be pretty wonderful. Yes. Her, uh, uh, the book that she wrote um, is uh, called Called Again. That's her second book. Okay. Uh, and that's the one that she wrote about her adventure on, in 2011 with that record-breaking hike. So it should be really interesting. Okay, and we have just about enough time to mention the Friends of the Library used book sales. Oh, yes. These posters are out and about everywhere. So yes. tell me about that. It's going to be Tuesday the 29th of July through Friday, August 1st. Okay. And there's going to be a members only preview sale noon at on Tuesday the 29th from like noon to 5. And uh, donations are being accepted. We're happy to receive books, audio books, okay. uh, toys, puzzles, CDs, DVDs. Games. Uh, games, yes. Um, and uh, we cannot accept encyclopedias, record albums, magazines, or textbooks. National Great right. Geographics, Reader's yeah. Digest, all those things. Yeah. But no Bibles and no VHS tapes, or no old computer manuals or cassettes. Yes. And, and it's understandable, because yeah. those aren't in demand and something that you'd have to yeah. pay to um, dispose of. Yes. And, and this is supposed to be something to help you make a little bit That's of money, right. not cost you money. That's right. Okay, uh, and this is an awesome sale. If no one's been to the sale before, you need to go. There yes. are so many books. It's just so exciting. The smell and the feel of the books. It's just a yes. wonderful event. It and is. it's it's something that benefits the Friends of the Library to do some mm -hmm. wonderful things for they the library. Do. Okay, so we're just going to recap real quickly. Summer Book Club going on now. Yep. You know, get your books read, get down there, because the carnival's coming up on um, Wednesday, July 16th. Yep. Pushing the Limits Science Discussion, July 10th and July 24th. July 21st, um, National Geographic Adventure of the Year and the Friends Library book sale going on the 29th through August yes. 1st. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll look forward to talking to someone from the library next month. Thanks, Nancy. Take care. Please stay tuned. I'll be right back following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is for Besser Museum for Northeast Michigan, and I have Randy Schultz. Hi, Randy. Pleasure to see you again, Nancy. Pleasure to see you, and you kind of got roped into doing this today, but... You know, that's okay. Everything comes together. It happens for a reason, I guess. And like you said, you have such a tight-knit, unique crew over there that everyone knows everything, so it's pretty easy for anyone to fill in. Yeah, we usually work on about a three to four minute uh, <laughs> grace period. Okay, something's going on, somebody moves to get it done, but that's okay. And today we want to start out by talking about the Vietnam exhibit that you have, and I'm sure it's phenomenal. I haven't seen it yet. We have, uh, yeah, it's probably really grown um, as each of the military tribute exhibits that we've done. What's interesting with the exhibit and what I really try to, to, to put on to people is you're never going to see another exhibit like this again, and here's the reason. I've had 52 Vietnam veterans share me over 500 items. Wow. You're never going to get that group of guys together again and share those particular items. Uh, it it's became probably one of the most emotional exhibits. When I've done the World War II and the Korean, I had 50, 60, 70 people loan items, but it was grandpa's stuff, it was dad's items, where this is 52 Personal. Vietnam veterans came in and talked to me. Shortest time would be 45 minutes. Most of the conversations were about three hours. And you know, that's a time, that's the baby boomer generation, that's a time we remember. That was a war that nobody wanted. It was an unpopular war. Everything that happened back at home, the protest. I mean, we can all remember that and feel it, feel the feeling of that era. I think the, the one of the interesting things that I've discovered is uh, setting the exhibit, and I had coworkers that I worked with in the past would come in 
and I'm looking, I'm like, I had no idea. Um, to me, veterans are probably some of the most humble individuals you're going to oh, find. Yes. They're not going to broadcast what they did. They, they, that's just not their style. And who are we to ask? Yes. Uh, it's just something that doesn't come up in the conversation. So it's amazing with that age and that generation, how many are walking alongside of us. And you have no idea what these guys did. It's amazing. It's basic. Give me an idea of some of the things that you have on display. Oh, goodness. We have, again, unique items, rare items. Uh, I don't look at them as that. I look at them as each one is a personal, a personal artifact that, that these veterans, for some reason, brought this back. It has a story attached. I give, I, I give guided tours on Friday at 1.30 because of requests by visitors. If I really push it, I can get it done in an hour. We had over 800 school kids go through the end of the school year, come through the exhibit. I have items, and not to take anything importance away from any of the items, a single St. Christopher medal that mom gave this veteran when he went to Vietnam. And then I had another veteran bring in almost 100 items. We have um, purple hearts. We have helmets, we have fatigues, we have Claymore mines. This is stuff that just didn't come back. And I will say probably, I like to push the envelope on a lot of stuff. So when I say this, I'm pushing the envelope. Photographs, I had never seen so many photographs come back. That's a hard thing to display. Oh yes. Can't lay them out to the public and let them thumb through them. So we scan them and we put them in a poster format. When you walk in that exhibit, you're, probably 80% of those photographs would have never been released by the military. Wow. And what I mean by that is our BXs where we could take in the film and get it developed, at that time the military would have censored it. They would take it into the little villages in South Vietnam, pay Mama Son 15 cents and she developed the film, and then they'd quickly send it home before anybody had a chance to look at it. That I call American ingenuity. That allows us to let people today, the oh, visitors yes. come in and see what these guys uh, lived, went through. Um, I don't think people really have an understanding of what Vietnam, even the environment, tropical rainforest, uh, average temperature 110 to 120 degrees. We complain when we have that for three, four days. I've read, I've read a lot of stories, Blood Red Hands of Ho Chi Minh, read so many different books oh, yeah. and stories and I know people don't understand. It's, it's, it's amazing. I, it, it's sad when you talk to the veterans and you listen to some of the animosity, maybe some of the, the anger they have about what happened on the home front. It wasn't that warm, fuzzy World War II celebration home front. Um, a lot of people were misunder, misunderstood the whole concept, really didn't know what was going on. And I had one young lady, the, one of the only non-veteran uh, suppliers of items that they, they brought in, and when she told me what she had, she said, I have 15 books. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can use this for my own personal gain. I can get some information. I can use it for reference. When she brought the books in and she started laying them out, and I'm like, well, you were a collector. She said, well, I had, I had college friends and high school friends going to Vietnam and coming back. And I felt I should really get an understanding of what they were doing. Wow. If half of the people back home would have done something like that to get an understanding instead of listening to rumors, uh, it would have been a whole lot different story when the guys came home. You know, it's a JFK area that was the, you know, the hallucinogenic drugs. I mean, when you think about that area, it was just so much going on. A lot, and then throw a war on top of yes. it. Yes. Um, you have JFK shot. Robert Kennedy shot, Martin Luther King shot. You have some of the political unrest with the, the Nixon scandal and them folk changing the focus off of what they were doing and, and putting it onto mm -hmm. the war front. It wasn't popular. We were really shaken as a country, I feel. Uh, Evacuating all the men out of Vietnam at the end. and Yeah. Oh. Um, and, you know, and, and, and when they realized that we were there just putting in the time at the tone of 58,300 KIAs, you know, it's, um, it's crazy. And I, and I love when you say that because I have a lot of people, I, I had people correct me and say it was a police action. And I listen very strongly to what the veterans say. And if a veteran, he looked at me and he says, listen, son, when people are shooting lead at you and you're shooting lead back at them, it's a war. It is a war. Politicians can call it what they it want. It is a war. Well, I have goosebumps and I'm so excited. So tell me how long the exhibit will be up and when we can come to see we it. We actually, because of request, um, we are running it to October 5th. It's one of the longest okay. exhibits that we've, we have run. Okay. Um, I will tell you that it grows each and every day. I 
I bet. It's a healing process for these veterans. And if a veteran comes in and, and he does look at it and he takes the time, geez, within a couple of days, he says, you know, I have a couple items. Are you interested? So it's expanded out. We're running it to October 5th for two reasons. Um, we tried to get the half-scale Vietnam wall that we had in 1995 mm -hmm. here. The cost was just outrageous. Uh, we couldn't come up with that small nonprofit like we are. But we didn't want to stop there. So I contacted a Vietnam veterans group down in Roseville, Michigan, and they have what is called the Michigan Memorial Tribute Exhibit, which is a scaled down 42-foot 42, 42 model ah. of just the Michigan's KIAs and MIAs. That will be here September 26th, Perfect. 27th, and 28th. So we wanted to extend it past that. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been popular, it's been well received. Okay, we're out of town, time, have to close, but Friday's at 1.30, you do a guided tour. Absolutely. Okay, pay admission to come in, get the guided tour. Absolutely. Well worth your time. Yep, and again, if people are out of town, they're not here on a Friday, come up to the front counter, ask if I'm back, I'll be more than happy to walk through and uh, give a tour. Thank you very much. Thank Andy. you. Appreciate the off, uh, offer to come down and talk to you. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joynton following these messages. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Olin Joynton, president of Alpena Community College. My guest this morning, recently promoted Vice President of Workforce Development, Don McMaster. Welcome to the show, Don. Well, thank you, Olin. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, and uh, congratulations on your uh, promotion. Uh, the ACC Board of Trustees, uh, took action uh, with regard to uh, both of us uh, uh, in the month of June, just just concluded, and that's going to be the subject of our uh, uh, talk today. Uh, first of all, regarding me, they accepted my request that uh, we set uh, one year from now as my retirement date. Uh, that will conclude uh, 11 and a half years at ACC and 40 years in the community college business for me as I started out as an adjunct instru instructor in Houston teaching a one evening course uh, at a high school campus uh, because the college that hired me had not yet finished uh, constructing its, its campus. And so I've had a wonderful e experience and look forward to uh, another year here in Alpena working with you and the other members of the ACC staff and the trustees. Uh, the other uh, newsworthy item was the trustee's designation of you as being positioned to succeed me. And so that was uh, also something that I uh, uh, was uh, uh, talking to the trustees of, about uh, in April and May, starting in April and May, and was glad to see their uh, uh, interest in that and their announcement that we will proceed in that direction. So that's good news for the college, good news for you and, and for me as we have an opportunity to work this final year of mine uh, towards that end. A wonderful arrangement. I'm appreciative for everyone who um, orchestrated it, made it happen, supported it. Um, and um, I look forward to the opportunity. It's a very exciting uh, uh, year ahead and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, me too. Um, you're a well-known person around uh, Alpena and uh, have worked for the college for over 20 years, uh, but I think it wouldn't hurt just to give the <coughs> audience members a little bit on your background and then your recent preparation uh, to assume an executive uh, post uh, at Ferris State University. How about going back to your origins uh, in the county to the south? Very good, a proud graduate of uh, a 1977 graduate of Alcona High School. And um, uh, family has been down there for 130 years. And we still own a property down there. We were farmers growing up. My dad was a school teacher. My mom raised boys. So I have three brothers that I'm very fond of and respect a lot. Um, I went off to University of Michigan, enjoyed it very much, learned a lot. Um, kind of going from a very small pond into a, a much deeper one, uh, competing against uh, very bright people, and um, enjoyed that. Um, uh, after that, uh, uh, Mich University of Michigan uh, career was done, I was a magazine writer for about eight years. And um, living down in the Ann Arbor area, doing magazine articles, um, my soon-to-be wife, uh, Dr. Rossi, had settled in the region, in Alpena, um, and loved it, and uh, still does. 
and um, we met um, on a blind date. Um, I think it was, it was around the uh, Die Hard 2 movie, which was huge news at that time. I, da I date myself and her, but uh, we hit it off and I moved north. And like a lot of folks, um, instructors and students alike, I uh, was fortunate to encounter the community college <clears throat> and I became a part-time instructor like yourself, um, working on a grant. It in introduced me to a Besser Company, Baker, uh, Fletcher Paper, a lot of the folks there, and I began to, to learn a lot about what workforce development was about and the, and the connection between community colleges and the workforce and economic development and, and the viability of a community. And I've only found that to, to be more and more interesting um, in the 20 years, uh, roughly, that I've been engaged in it. During that period, you were working with President Emeritus uh, Don Newport and Dean Emeritus Chuck Wieson. Absolutely. Yeah, two, two real sharp guys. They're movers and shakers. They did a lot of good things for the college. Indeed. And um, um, in, in that intervening 20 years, I've... Uh, and this uh, really motivates my, uh, uh, our work together, or my, my part of our work together. It just seems to me the community college is so uh, central to the economic and cultural uh, health of, the, of, of a region, particularly Northeast Michigan, where we're the, we're the uh, main provider of those things. Um, it, um, now, uh, uh, we're getting towards the end of our time, but how about just to mention that uh, 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 as, as with your uh, wife, you can now be called doctor. Yes, indeed, yes. Uh, thanks to uh, a lot of folks, a lot of family, my uh, children, my wife, and you, um, who um, uh, pr uh, persuaded, cajoled, uh, um, and urged me to uh, complete the last... Compensated for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I completed a doctorate in May at, in uh, community college leadership through Ferris. It was uh, very practical, um, application-oriented, uh, very valuable credential, learned a lot, and it prepared me in some ways, not every way, for the next step, I believe. Good. Trustees and I uh, are working on a a, a, a path of mentoring for you, uh, and you've had some input on that. Over the next year, we'll be pursuing that path, and uh, so uh, I, I have every confidence of its uh, success, and look forward to that phase of our working together. Um, any any final uh, words on your vision for the presidency of ACC, uh, looking to the future? Well, um, I'm a, half, a glass half full type person. You know, I, and um, the older I get, the more I'm in the community, the more I believe that, and the more I see the need for others to believe it too. I, I look out and I see opportunities. I see things for uh, the college to do that we currently do, but maybe we could do it better, or that we don't currently do enough of that we could uh, move into. I believe in trying leveraging the, the most positive assets of the region. I really, um, I feel the, uh, the, the staff, it, it would be an honor to lead a group of, uh, of such bright folks and who are committed to the community and the community citizens. You're right on track and it's been a source of great uh, pleasure uh, for me. So uh, we'll uh, follow this path and I want to thank you uh, for all the hard work you've done to prepare yourself uh, and uh, we will uh, have fun. Uh, and uh, do good stuff in the coming year. I also appreciate your being the guest uh, on the program this morning. My pleasure, and thank you. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smith and Dr. Owen Jordan. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at www.wbkb11.com and click on Community. This has been the Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. <laughs>